In this first major section of the course, we're going to be covering an introduction to probability and distribution theory. Now, before we get into the probability itself, we need to uh, talk about the context in which we're going to be studying probability, and that context is the field of statistics. Now, what is statistics? Statistics is often described as the field of study concerned with the collection, the summarization, and the presentation of data, and the the use of the resulting information in making inferences about the population from which the data were obtained. More generally, statistics can be described as the field of study that deals with making decisions in the face of uncertainty, of drawing conclusions based on incomplete information. Now, in order to make decisions in the face of that uncertainty, the uncertainty must be taken into account in the decision-making process in some way. When drawing a conclusion based on incomplete information, we can never be completely certain that our conclusion is correct. Now, a statistical conclusion actually has two parts, two, uh, two aspects to it. The decision itself, and then a measure of the reliability of that decision. Qualitative decisions are typically based on quantitative results, and associated with a quantitative result is a level of precision. Now, there is an inverse relationship between the precision and the reliability of a quantitative result. So that's uh, what we mean by the field of statistics. Now, uh, what is the realm of statistics? Well, given that the field of statistics deals with decision-making in the face of uncertainty, where can statistical methods of inference be applied? So think about uh, all the ways that you could... Uh, Imagine having to make uh, decisions in the face of uncertainty. Uh, where do we have uncertainty? Where, where do we uh, uh, have incomplete information about uh, the uh, process or the population uh, that we're wanting to uh, know something about? Well, we can apply these kinds of techniques in business, obviously, in the empirical sciences like uh, chemistry, physics, biology, in government and political decision-making. Uh, we see statistics being used all the time. In personal decision-making, all right, I, we know that uh, we uh, quite often, um, in fact, probably most often, uh, make decisions uh, without complete information um, about the environment or the uh, situation uh, that we have to deal with. Now, let's look at uh, each one of these areas in turn. So in uh, business decision-making, uh, think about the example of banks and credit card companies. Uh, they have to assess credit risk, determining who to issue a credit card to or uh, approve a loan for. Insurance companies assess long-term risk and determine uh, policy premiums that will ensure adequate, adequate capital reserves in case there are claims. Online businesses is... Uh, Another uh, very modern uh, area where statistics is being applied, um, very, very much so. Tailored marketing uh, based on past purchases, items in an online shopping cart, or uh, relationships or comments made on social media such as Facebook and Twitter. I'm sure you've had the experience of being online and, and gone to Amazon.com or some other uh, online vendor, looked at some items, uh, uh, Maybe you didn't even purchase items. Maybe you just looked at them or put them in your shopping cart without purchasing. And then you go to Facebook or Twitter and or some maybe a news uh, website or something like that. And all of a sudden you see ads starting to pop up on the very uh, items or types of items that uh, you were just looking at. So uh, what's happening there is that these uh, online companies are harvesting your uh, mouse clicks, you know, the places you go online, and they are building... Uh, Profiles, so to speak, building predictive models based on uh, your history on the web, and they are uh, creating targeted uh, marketing advertisements just specifically for you. The empirical sciences are another area of application of statistics. The social sciences, such as psychology, sociology, kinesiology, and political science, are all areas that utilize statistics. Uh, 
uh, quite a lot. And in fact, some of the most interesting examples that I've seen have come uh, from the social science areas. Uh, in the agricultural and aquacultural sciences, uh, these, uh, uh, this uh, broad field of uh, research and application uh, is a very big, uh, uh, not only consumer of statistical procedures, but um, of uh, uh, producers of that kind of methodology as well. Statisticians working in agricultural uh, uh, settings and in ag agricultural application areas um, have developed a lot of statistical methodology um, and, uh, and uh, uh, you know, applications of that kind of uh, methodology. So the soil sciences, animal science, uh, entomology, fishery science, and so forth. There are many, many other uh, areas in the agricultural and aquacultural sciences. Many of you in class uh, may uh, be part of those, uh, those fields. And the medical and health sciences. All right, this is another area where statistics has grown up. Uh, the pharmaceutical development, you know, so uh, randomized cl uh, clinical trials are the pretty much the gold standard for uh, developing uh, pharmaceuticals and drugs. Um, and so that's a very big area where statistics is used, uh, clinical trials. Evidence-based me uh, medicine is uh, becoming more and more prevalent. So physicians um, uh, not only utilizing um, patient-level data, but combining that with uh, population level data, perhaps uh, using some kind of a, a statistical model that has been produced and, and has been provided to them. So these are all, uh, these three areas, uh, the social sciences, the um, agricultural sciences, and the medical and health sciences are uh, three very um, uh, big areas in the empirical sciences where uh, statistics has grown up. And uh, in some ways, um, the because the problems, uh, in, in some ways, the problems that they're dealing with are unique to the individual areas. Uh, not all things are unique. There are, there are, there are a lot of common, uh, commonalities, but there are some uniquenesses, and because of that, uh, uh, there are some um, <clears throat> statistical methodologies that you tend to see only in uh, the social sciences, for example. For example, structural equation modeling or path analysis is very prevalent in the social sciences, but you would uh, almost never see it um, in the agricultural sciences. Uh, on the other hand, uh, mixed modeling or uh, other kinds of, uh, perhaps uh, certain kinds of experimental designs you might tend to see in uh, the agricultural sciences, but uh, perhaps not in uh, the medical sciences. So um, the, there's a lot of statistics that's uh, been developed and grown up in these three areas. Uh, there are a lot of commonalities, but there are some uniquenesses as well. Governmental uh, decision making and political decision making. So there, uh, you know, are a variety of re regulatory agencies that utilize statistics. Uh, the uh, USDA, uh, United States um, Department of Agriculture, is a big uh, utilizer of statistics. The uh, EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, um, the CDC, uh, and so forth. So uh, statistics is used. Um, quite a bit in government uh, and also in political decision making. I'm sure that uh, you're very aware you've seen it in, uh, in uh, the news, uh, magazines, and so forth. Uh, political polls all the time. Uh, they're trying to get a feel for the uh, pulse of the country, for example. Uh, so folks, uh, uh, political, uh, I'm sorry, political polling agencies uh, conducting polls um, and uh, reporting those in the news, um, trying to uh, inform the public and sometimes uh, probably trying to sway the public opinion as well using those polls. Uh, but that's the reality of the situation. All right, so the next section is how statistics deals with uncertainty. And um, what we're going to do is, uh, I think I'll stop this particular video right now and we'll pick this next section up uh, in the next video.